Great, good morning. Um, welcome, Jessica. Thanks so much for having this conversation with me. Um, for future listeners, I'm with Jessica Bittner. Um, Jessica has been a client for the last little bit. Uh, actually, you'll have to tell me when um, when we started working together, but I asked you here, Jessica, to share a little bit about your experience in the Holy Darkness series, um, which was this last winter, the first one, or did you do two years ago as well? No, this was my first one. This was your first one. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, maybe we could start, Jessica, with just like, do you, would you share a little bit about yourself? Um, like, who are you in the world? And let's just start there. Yeah. Um, hi. <laughs> so I'm Jessica. Um, I am currently a stay-at-home mama to two kids. Um, I am a former pastor um, at a non-denominational church. Um, and that just, um, I mean, for many reasons, that was not the right fit. Um, and so after doing about 10 years of church ministry, um, I just like through COVID and having kids and the whole nine mm -hmm. yards, just my belief system started to shift. And when you're a pastor, and <laughs> that's like your entire livelihood, that's terrifying. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, so I, um, my last day at the church was Christmas Eve of 2021. And so then I had a whole entire year um, before I found you. <laughs> and um, I reached out to a friend of mine. And um, well, I say friend of mine, she's actually um, my pelvic floor doctor. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dear friend. <laughs> so, yeah, right. <laughs> but we had had um, just like some really great conversations about like faith and spirituality. And I just like found myself seeking and looking for um, just like a new experience. I think for me, um, I'm currently in religious trauma therapy. Um, if you need that, 10 out of 10 recommend. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, I just kind of found myself um, noticing that as the year goes on, um, my body was recognizing trauma. And so, um, you know, Easter season comes around and I am just an absolute basket case and mm -hmm. um, just mm -hmm. like, really struggle with that season because you know, I, for many years was a worship pastor. I was a, and then I was like, um, an associate pastor doing like small groups and all of that kind of stuff. And so mm -hmm. those that season was when, you know, when you're just super busy and you're planning and it's just really overwhelming. Um, and then I found the same being true of Christmas time. And, you know, I, I just, when I was a kid, well, I mean, obviously when you were a kid, but even, you know, into my early twenties, I loved Christmas. It was fantastic, you know, and it was so fun and it was magical. And, you know, um, you just have all these happy memories. And then I'm sitting there just like, great, I'm in my thirties and I'm creating memories for my kids of me being a basket case and in tears mm -hmm. and not being okay. able to function well in the season okay. um, because of trauma that has happened in my life. And then also just my body being very, very sensitive to stress. And so I reached out to, um, to my, my doctor um, and I was like, Hey, we had some really great um, conversations when I was your patient. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking for a way to reinvent spirituality for myself. I'm seeking, I don't know what I'm seeking, mm -hmm. but I just need different. I need to rewrite this season. And she's like, oh my gosh, you need Kate. <laughs> 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 and so she sent me the link to sign up for Holy Darkness. And I just like read what it was. And I was like, you know, so being someone who, like I said, I was a worship pastor and, and like, that's my um, undergrad degree. And then I have a master's in theology. And so like the church year and Advent and stuff like that is like, just so near and dear to my heart. Um, and, and I found myself just like really craving rituals and rhythm. And, um, when those have not been present in my life since leaving religion, um, it's just been like, well, wait, I feel kind of, kind of like a wayward ship without an anchor, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I read the description of holy darkness. I was like, you know what, this is so different from anything that I have ever engaged with in the season. 
I think I need to do it, even if it's just for that purpose. Yeah. And so um, I signed up and I, first I told my husband about it, you know, because I'm a stay at home mom now. And so I'm like, hey, yeah. <laughs> And, you know, I told him about it and he's just like, that sounds so perfect for you. Yes, please. Nice. So yeah, that's how I found it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. So that is usually my first question of folks, like, what were you struggling with? What problem were you facing, um, you know, before connecting with me? And it sounds like a couple of things that I'll just say back that I heard, I'm hearing are definitely this bigger um, pattern you've been working to address of religious trauma. And then also this feeling of like being adrift in like in time, like in the, in the calendar, in a way that, you know, liturgy, I think the beauty of liturgy is that it can kind of hold us through that and carry us through, through seasons in the liturgical year. And if there's rupture there, then right. It's just like every season is a different reminder of the pain. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Um, so maybe then you could share a little bit about like what your experience was, like what had an impact on you in the series? Um, what was it like for you? Um, what, what things stand out? um specific moments or insights that you had anything you want to share about the experience yeah um so so the first week <laughs> I so I had no idea what to expect at all no idea you know I just went into the whole thing blind and so you know the first yeah maybe week, I'll just ask real quick was this I mean I I'm I'm always kind of tongue-in-cheek but also it's true like my work is super woo right and <laughs> Would you, was this like a first encounter with Wu or was it like, so was it so foreign that it was like, I have nothing, no expectations or have, have you been like been curious in other capacities or like, what's your Wu exposure before this? <laughs> um, I mean, if I'm being completely honest, I don't even know what Wu means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So do you want to like define that for me, Rob? Oh my gosh. Yes, yeah, so, that's so good. I, I I guess how it's used sort of colloquially is just like the the spiritual but not religious, like okay. kind of okay. out out there spirituality, you know, it from anywhere from like I, I mean I'm I do psychic readings from psychic reading to like mediumship to UFOs or chakras, like all okay. Okay. all of the the new age, like all of the outside of the traditional spirituality realm. Okay. okay yeah. So, yeah. so my physical therapist did a little bit of that with me, like, yeah. in um, I think just because she could tell that like more than just my like physical body needed healing. And so she kind of like helped me along that way a little bit. Um, and then like outside of yoga, like none. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, largely just because like in the church, you know, they say that everything is taboo, you know, like mm. I, I, growing up, I couldn't even read Harry Potter. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. That gives a good. You better believe as soon as I went to college, I read Harry Potter, but. Like... <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks for that, that interruption. So go ahead and share how your experience was. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, I had like absolutely zero idea of what to expect. And so um, I just remember the first, the first session, um, you know, you, you kind of like give an overview and about, or yeah, kind of like um, where we're headed and some of that kind of stuff. Um, even, even just like when you introduced yourself and had us introduce ourselves and, um, you know, you're like, um, what indigenous group, you know, like whose land are you on? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> like I think that I'm on. Coast Salish, am mm -hmm. I? Is that how you say it? You know? And I was just like, wow, you know, so like to go back, like even to honoring, um, you know, the people here before us and, um, you know, like being very like social justice minded, but then, you know, like the next thing was like getting into your body, you know, and like whatever you need to do to, you know, to do that. And, you know, like, so we're rubbing our bodies and stuff and I'm just like, this is so weird. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> 
god, I love it so much. Okay, uh huh. But you stayed with it. I think yeah. didn't we talk right at the end of that class? Yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah. Okay, but keep going. Yeah. So, so that first week, um, I don't know if like you do the same visualizations like in next series. So I don't want to like spoil stuff for people. It's okay. It's okay. Go ahead. Um, so, you know, like we start talking about like how we're, how we're on this journey, you know? And so this visualization of, you know, like we're at a hearth and then we're on a path and what do you see at the horizon and all this stuff. And I'm just like, I don't know. And there are people, you know, who are just like saying these eloquent things or like, you know, very thought out or maybe not thought out, but they've just done this work before. So they kind of, you know, know like what to sense or like how to name what they're sensing. And I was just lost and I was just like feeling, feeling like, you know, the, the like warmth is what is guiding me. Is that an okay answer? Yeah. You know? And so I ended that first, that first um night in complete tears and like yeah, talked to you afterwards. I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. Um, but yeah, your encouragement was just, you know, like to stick with it and um and like to be okay with where you're at, you know, and that like my journey might not or like my um pilgrimage, if you will, like might not you know, end in the same space as other people's or like, you know, the work that I do might even just be that I am sitting in this new, you know, um, kind of way, way of, um, expressing spirituality, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that is a win and that is okay, you know, and so to just kind of be okay with the process and wherever it kind of leads. And so, um, that's what I did and yeah. just kept showing up I think I missed one week because we had COVID <laughs> no I remember that <laughs> but but I still watched the recording of it and still engaged with it later on and um yeah it was it was just such a fantastic experience and and like every week I feel like I was able to just kind of like let a, you know more and more guards down um and and you know the final week was like it's it's crazy to me because like these visualizations they're still just like so um fresh in my mind and mm -hmm. uh, remembering those experiences and I think part of it is that you know like you ground yourself in like a very safe space and um you know so like the very last week before we like went down to to the dark mother um, you know, I'm in the meadow at my grandma's house yeah. <laughs> in the middle of her, you know, acreage in Eastern Washington. And it's just like this place that is so safe and so secure. And it just makes it so that like, you can engage with these, with these visualizations in a really positive way. Um, mm -hmm. and so I really appreciated that. I would say overall, um, overall, like my biggest takeaway was just being, being happy in darkness. <laughs> And I think wow. that when you're grieving, um, you know, and like, obviously I'm, I'm not grieving like, you know, the loss of, of like a person, but, but at the same time I am right. Like I'm, I'm grieving yeah. the loss of my former identity really, you know, and, um, my identity within religion and, and like the community, even though, um, <laughs> the deconstruction happening in my mind is that was a false sense of community, <laughs> but it was still a sense. Right. And yeah. so, um, you know, but like, as I'm grieving all of those things and like a changing career and like, what does the future look like now? Oh my gosh, I have a master's in theology and I don't want to be a pastor. What? <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know? And so, um, yeah, just sitting, sitting in the darkness and recognizing that that is a healthy space. Um, you know, I think, I think before it was always like, you know, no, we're sending love and light and happiness. And, you know, you, you have to, in Advent, focus on the, on the light, you know, and yeah. go look at Christmas lights and be happy, you know, and it's like, but actually like, this is a really dark time. And my body is telling me that I need to go take a nap and I need to rest. And, you know, that I need to like, really, it, it's a season of like nourishment and nourishing my heart and stuff. And, um, and like, I love the garden analogies, right? Like <laughs> everything has, has gone to die, but in that death, it's bringing nourishment and, and new life to the soil. So that now like, you know, we're in summertime and I've got gorgeous tomatoes growing. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a full cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for all that. Yeah. Those were 
it's quite a series of I I often, you know, we do little intros, but I have no idea what people are coming in with most of the time, especially if they're new to me. Um, and yeah, and I have no idea unless people give give feedback, like how things are landing. Even like, I, I think about this a lot um, in the virtual world too. Often I'm leading something and in Holy Darkness, um, especially I noticed a lot of folks choose to stay off camera, which is great. And I'm happy for them to do that. Um, but it means that I have to, I'm relying all on like my kind of more energetic data. Like I'm going the way that I feel like I need to go, but I have no like direct feedback from, you know, participants like, are you asleep? Are you in tears? <laughs> like, I can't see what your bodies are doing. And that's okay. It's it, like, there's a lot of benefits and a lot of beauty to being able to do it virtually because people can just do their own thing if they need to without, you know, you could be in tears or you can go outside. And, um, but it means that like, yeah, I don't always know how things are going to land for people. And it is so diverse. Like the thing that makes a difference or the thing that really speaks or the thing that triggers. Um, so anyway, thank you for sharing all those. It's really interesting for me to hear about it. And I, I hope it will be helpful for people in the future kind of assessing if this is for them or getting a sense of, you know, to maybe expect not knowing what to expect. <laughs> those yeah. Sorts of yeah. Yeah, definitely. So my next what I'm wondering from here is like, is there anything like what have you noticed since then? Like it's been about six months since since then. And has there been any kind of rippling lasting impact? Where are you now in your kind of spiritual musings or um sense of well-being or you know, connection to the season? Like anything you want to say about that? Yeah, I think like going into holy darkness um you know it had been a year um since since leaving the church and so i think i felt like a pressure to figure out like what do i believe you know and exactly. and i think like when you have been in a belief system for 30 years you forget that like it took a really long time to get to you know mm. whatever point you landed on um, and so to then think like that you can reconstruct something quickly is an absolute joke, but, yeah. um, but I think that it just, it gave me permission to be. And so, um, at the end of that, of that, um, I guess session or yeah, session of Holy Darkness, mm -hmm. um, I, I, yeah, it just felt like this great comfort in, in like sitting with grief. A little bit and um that like I can sit in the darkness and percolate for as long as I need to you know of course like then spring came and summer you know and so you kind of think like oh you know you're supposed to like move with the seasons again we're back to the church year and you know like feeling like you're supposed to move with the seasons and and yet um I still just feel myself like definitely still sitting in the darkness um mm -hmm. and and just learning to be okay with that and remembering that like this is where nourishment comes from. And so um, it encouraged me to go back to therapy because <laughs> um, I haven't been in therapy for a while. <laughs> yeah. And so um, I sought out someone who specializes in religious trauma. And, um, you know, so I, I've just started working with them in the last like, like two months and it's been great. Um, you know, to be able to finally feel like I'm at a place that I can start kind of peeling back some of those layers and remembering grief is not linear, <laughs> it is cyclical. And, yeah. you know, so I'm going to like continue to kind of like be in this, in this season and different things will come up and, and stuff, but, but just that it is okay to, to sit in darkness. That's not a bad thing. It's, it's actually a very, very healing time. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, not to make this about me at all, but like, that's my goal. <laughs> that was my goal. Um, and it doesn't mean it happens every time, but 
but definitely this piece of like un, like unpathologizing or undemonizing darkness um and yeah there is a lot of ad you know even the traditional advent that jesus you know christ is the light in the darkness and um so just to have a different relationship with darkness as part of the natural order of things and part of our own our own uh, embodiment um, and kind of building some of that tolerance at minimum, like building some tolerance and if if possible, building some you, that exactly what you're describing, like a capacity to receive the nourishment that's there. So that is so cool. And I'm really glad to hear that. I'm really glad to hear that. Yeah. Um, was there anything, it sounds like you were like really ready for this when it came to you. Is there anything that felt like a barrier to signing up or that might have prevented you from joining? Um, yeah. So, I mean, fear of the unknown, <laughs> um, you know, just like not sure what to expect coming from, um, again, like that, that Christian background and reading, you know, like that you're a priestess, like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And stuff like that. Um, and, you know, so I think just like being willing to engage with different, um, you know, was, was a big part for me. And then yeah. um, super like brave, that, by the way, super brave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then like, just since we're a single income family home, like the, the cost was a little bit, but then also like recognizing that for great change, you need to have buy-in. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, we, we talked about as family, we, you know, kind of figured out how to make that work and, and we made it work. So, yeah. That makes sense. Those, I bet those will be barriers for other folks. Um. So I appreciate you speaking to those. Yeah. Um, and I guess as a segue to that, like, who would you, is there, who would you recommend this to? Um, if someone was considering participating in something like this in the future, uh, maybe if they were on the fence or had some of those fears, what would you say to them? Yeah, um, so I have suggested those to quite a few people. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I, so it's kind of funny because I've found myself lately, like collecting friends. <laughs> um, and it's basically like people who are like, oh, you know, I used to work in a church or I used to be religious, but I'm not anymore. Um, literally a friend, I just made a friend who is a neighbor, um, but, but like, it's like a long story, but like their package accidentally got dropped off at my house and now we're becoming friends. Oh, that's um, beautiful. But literally because, yeah, but literally because she said that um, she used to be a Christian, now she's an atheist. And I'm like, hey, let's be friends. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, but like a lot of those kinds of people who are like deconstructing religion, who are coming out of that, but are still looking for some space to be able to experience spirituality. Um, yeah. I think that, yeah. Um, so I've suggested it to my brother who, um, is kind of in that space. Um, his wife who she was not like raised evangelical or anything like that, but, um, you know, she, she kind of already is in that space of like, uh, working with crystals and, you know, some of that. And so I'm like, oh, you would totally love this, you know? So, um, it's fun because I feel like it appeals to so many different people. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. People who are deconstructing religion, people who, um, who are just looking for something different in that season of, of like the Christmas season, because, mm -hmm. because that season can mean so much for so many different people. Um, yeah. and I think that it just really beautifully can meet almost anybody where they're at. If, if you're going to have an open mind and an open heart to receive, you know, what, what it has for you. Yeah. And so if someone was like, kind of maybe to that open or, um, you know, having an open mind or open heart, like, what would you say to someone who was interested, but maybe like, oh, is this, this is a little weird, or I have some fear of the unknown, like anything you would say to that? Um, I mean, I would just encourage them to jump in and like that yeah. fear is totally valid. And like, I was afraid too. Um, mm. 
that honestly, like I could even see myself signing up again, doing it again and telling them we'll do it with them. Oh yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> you know, um, maybe I'll, that, I'll make a promotion around that. Yeah. And like grab a friend. <laughs> yeah totally yeah but yeah you know like grab a friend and, and do it together um you know and like yeah it's it's valid to to be like a little bit nervous but just even like sharing my story hopefully and like letting them know you know that this this was like really an influential thing for me um and just encouraging them that it can be for them too yeah, yeah. awesome thank you so much uh is there anything else you want to say about either that experience where you are now or um you know to someone anticipating this in the future anything else that feels unsaid um I don't think so honestly just just do it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah just be open um and and I I think it's just really cool how when you are open to receive that like you will and so yeah. to just kind of like yeah let it be and kind of walk in with like this posture of open hands and, yeah. and just, like, ready to kind of see like what what it holds for you I love that yeah I do think that's that feels like my part of my intention as facilitator is to like support people and hold like finding that posture or the just right posture you know that is that re receptive state and and then after that like I really have no idea what you know, what the goddess is going to place in your hands. So <laughs> there is, there is, um, a lot, there is a, an entering into the mystery like that, that is, does make it hard sometimes to say what, you know, what you're going to get, but you will get something. Yeah. So thank you so much, Jessica. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me and share share that kind of insider experience and um yeah i would welcome you back to join in this next year and um anyone else listening in the future um please check it out <laughs>